Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this episode of NF Swift Tips, we'll be having a look at dynamic frameworks. You could use them when you want to reuse a specific part of your project into another. Let's say you're working for a client that wants an iOS app, but at later stage would like to have a tvOS or macOS versions of the same app. To, so what you can do then is you can write all the business logic of the app into a dynamic framework and you can reuse this framework into the different products that you'll be doing. All different versions of the app will use the same dynamic framework. By doing this, you can uh, provide a better, a more unified experience throughout your different apps because they will basically be running the same thing, if you know what I mean, the same business logic. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you can also separate this dynamic framework into a separate Git repository and use it with uh, dependency managers like Cartage, CocoaPods, or you could even use Git submodules directly. Uh, but for now, I'm thinking of showing you only like a small portion of all the things that I've said, because if I show you all the things, this video will run really long. So I'll separate it in two parts. The first one will be about how you can set up a Xcode workspace with your main project and additional projects that will produce this dynamic framework. And the second part of this video will be about how you can put this dynamic framework into a different Git uh, repository and have a separate development team working on there simultaneously with your main team. Let's go into Xcode and show you how you can do all of that. All right, so here we are in Xcode. We have opened a simple project called Lionheart Demo for the purpose of this uh, video. In it, we have a specific loading view, like a small spinner shown in the middle of the screen that we would like to make uh, reusable in between projects. So we'll make it, we'll add it to a dynamic library and we'll link it to this project. So let me show you how the app looks like currently. It's a simple app. It uh, fetches public photos from uh, public APIs. I think it was Flickr. And it just shows them in collection view. It's pretty simple. So see this loading view? We'll put it in dynamic framework. All right, so that's what, what it looks like some public photos, collection view, custom layout. We don't care about these things, right? So this is the implementation of the loading view. It is done in zip file and it has a class to it. So what we will do now is first we have to save this uh, Xcode environment into a workspace. So go to File, Save as a Workspace. Pick a location, I'll save it in the same directory under the same name as our project. Like this. Go to the directory, see, yep, here we go, we have the new workspace. Let's close this project and open the workspace now. Fine, so, so far everything is uh, good. We have the same setup, one project in the workspace. Let's make new one. So go to file, new project, and pick this template, Cocoa Touch Framework. Type next, pick a name, I'll name it loading view because it will contain only this. Now it asks me where I want to save it. I'll pick the same directory and I'll say that I want to add it to the workspace Landhard demo on the root. 
of the in the root group of this workspace like this cool so we have a second project now uh, let's flip their order like I don't know but I think for me it's more appropriate fine so we have the project now this is the loading view that we want to move to this library so now if you've done everything correctly up until now you'll see that you have a new target called loading view if you try to build it it should pass nicely because it doesn't have a code in it to compile so the first thing that we want to check is to make sure that this new target and this new project has the same deployment target can run on the same version of iOS as the main project so the main one is for uh, deployment target 11.2 yeah 11.2 so we have to switch this one to the same deployment target so that it could be added as a dependency to this one Oh, you can pick a lower version too, that would be fine. Let's say I'll pick iOS 11. Uh, in general, you should always strive to keep uh, the deployment target as lower as possible uh, because that way uh, you are not artificially making, introducing requirements to your library that you don't really use. Let's say if you're using things that were available back in a uh, lower version of iOS, there's no need of setting a higher deployment target uh, without using new things introduced in the newer versions. So yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, now uh, we have this uh, deployment target set. Let's make the linking of the two projects now go to uh, your main target that produces the final app the final product under the tab general in the project file you will find this section called embedded binaries from here you can uh, click the plus sign and this uh, pop-up will appear and see how it lists all the projects in our current workspace you can pick uh, the product of every target in your workspace pretty much but for our case uh, we want to pick this framework file and what this means is every time when we're trying to build this target here that we're currently editing this target has to be built to because it de our target depends on this one and so every time your code here will compile and will update when you're trying to build your main version of the app click add button and now you see this this thing here uh, this is normal, don't worry about it. Uh, it's just saying that currently there is no compiled version of the library uh, that is uh, to be used with this thing, but it will all run nicely. It will make a version for itself as long as these links here are made. And also don't pay attention to the multiple targets that I have. Uh, in another video, I will show you how you can uh, make dupli duplicate of targets and make slight adjustments to your to your app that uh, run in separate targets it's uh, pretty useful for let's say setting up networking environments and stuff but uh, we'll talk about this later and so this is our code now we want to make it part of this project basically this is what we are trying to achieve so grab these two files and drag them here So what happens now is uh, one really crucial step uh, that we have to do is we have to check where, where the locations of these files are. Have a look at it here. So 
it's in uh, voting view voting view uh, that means it it's in the directory under this project so it's no longer here and that's why we're seeing the r that means renamed and switched uh, name and yeah the location is so good you can double check in finder if you're having some concerns yeah you can see in the same direct directory like the info playlist from here so and the loading view age so it should all be fine yep let's go back in xcode and remove these references then we no longer need them like this and now try and build your project and see what kind of errors will pop up and we'll fix them one by one they should be pretty simple so this builds first the target it says value of type string has no member localized yep that is correct uh, it's part of the other project I'm um, using this to call the macro ns localized string so yeah let's remove it for now I'll, maybe I'll introduce it later if I need to and here we go yeah now it's building fine however I know that there will be some more issues with this uh, framework that we have to fix now even though it's compiling fine nothing will be exposed to another modules because this loading view class has uh, internal visibility that means no one else from another module will be able to access it and so what we want to do is to make it public like this and the same applies for the functions that we will use to interact with it so they have to be public uh, the cool part about uh, this uh, visibility is uh, like issues is that now you can choose which methods to expose to the users of your library let's say you have some uh, functions that do really complex algorithms or let's say are part of a specific uh, procedure that you don't want anyone to be able to call like and leave your object in uh, undefined state so now you can hide all that and expose only the messages to which your object should be able to respond uh, perfectly at every one uh, moment so yeah that's a cool uh, benefit of using dynamic frameworks okay so for now it all looks nice let's try to compile it but this time let's compile our app and see what issues we have it should say that we're missing the definitions of loading view because i have just deleted it actually i have one more issue here uh, this method is public and now it's internal so i have to make it yeah xcode is helping me out here and the other issues are part of the main target it says i cannot i can't find lo loading view uh, show method or loading view class in general because now it is part of loading view module and when we import it and build it it says loading view has no member named show but it has maybe we just have to rebuild it so that it links fine yep it's so nice now it builds fine let's try and run it and see the next mistake that we'll have and how we'll approach it I'm not uh, I'm leaving all the mistakes here for you guys just to see how one should approach them because if I just show you how automatically works and uh, hiding all the details about it and all the complications then this tutorial is like kind of pointless or it loses its value a little so yeah here is the next error 
uh, terminating due to uncode exception internal inconsistency could not vote nip in bondo yep that is correct i know why this happens i will show you now so when you go here to our code in this part where we are initializing an instance and sh getting it ready to be shown we are calling this ui nip and uh, constructor to load a nip file from which to instantiate the UI bits of this uh, loading view but here for bundle we're passing new which if you open the documentation by holding the out key the option key and clicking on the method it says yeah it's weird why it's not loading the documentation yeah it's Xcode, what can you do? Sometimes this happens, but basically if you pass new here, uh, it tries to find this UI nib in your main bundle of the app, which means the target bundle here. So these files that are part of this target bundle. However, the XIP is no longer there. The XIP is our new module, new bundle, uh, it's in loading view bundle so now let's make it like this current bundle let's bundle like that bundle and let I'll use this class uh, like this kind of method to initialize it let's pass here loading view dot self like that and don't worry about this dot self part if you don't uh, write it if you don't remember that it's that's the way it has to be written xcode will i'm sure xcode will tell hey you're yeah here you go so this is a stupid error you know you shouldn't uh, be you you shouldn't be worried about not remembering this detail and here we have the bundle, the current bundle in, in which we have this nip. Let's just pass it here, like that. And it should now load nicely. Let's check to see what will happen. Yep. As you can see, it works in exactly the same way. The project compiles. We have the loading view and the rest of the app working but the difference is that the loading view is now separated from the pro project and when we go in a file where we're using it, it should be this thing because it's the only modified thing yeah where it is loading view the documentation still appears and you can uh, control click uh, command click i mean uh, to go and see the code just like before it's so convenient but the cool part is that when you're doing auto completion here in this files now you no longer uh, see uh, auto completions for functions that don't uh, that are not exposed as public functions and that's cool sometimes when you want to hide some details. That's all from Xcode. All right, guys. So this is the end of the first part of the video. I hope you found it useful. In the next one, we'll have a look at how we can get this dynamic framework into a separate Git uh, repository and include it in our projects with dependency managers like Cartage, CocoaPods, and kit sub modules directly uh, if you're new to this channel you should consider subscribing because i'll be posting for you guys videos like this every week so yeah till next week have a nice day everybody bye bye